Hey everyone, welcome to From the Depths. I'm Menti and this is episode 9 of season 2 of the Battleship Brawl Tournament. In this episode we've got His Broken Sword by Crushed Ember, which was the very first entry submitted for this uh, tournament quite a long time ago. It has a ton of guns on the side of it, a very broadside ship. And then over here we have the Marai Shiki Nini, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but you know, uh, by the light LOD, uh, which is a, it, I like the look of this ship. It has a very futuristic feel to it, yet still very much feels like a battleship. Like, uh, and these, uh, these glass, how are these even being held on? Oh, light blocks, right there. <laughs> okay. The little glass blast shields, I guess using them as a, a form of ablative space armor. Oh, it's also got the, the little spotter plane thing. <laughs> That's neat. Also held on by light blocks. Oh, it's got ammo up here too, so it's a little distraction thing. All right, he meant, okay. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get round one between these two contestants underway. Both ships settling into the water, moving toward one another. The, the Rai Shikinini long reaching a barrage of high explosive shells, like right away. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't that many, but it was a good amount. Man, it, it, it's definitely got some high rate of fire weaponry there. And oh, here comes some pen depth. And oh, 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 jeez. Oh, his the, his broken sword is. Uh, quickly living up to its name and becoming broken. The front turret has already been destroyed and it hasn't even been able to get itself brought. Oh, and there's an engine overheat. Oh, it is getting positively slammed by the Mirai Shikinini. I'm just going to call it the Mirai. 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 I'm just calling it Mirai. Oh, just a constant barrage of fire. Absolutely tearing into the the broken sword here. It's down to 80%. I don't even think it managed to fire a shot. Let's take a look at the Mirai. It's got those secondary guns. It's got a lot of guns on it. That is a lot of guns. So it looks like once again the light LOD has brought a quite powerful ship to the competition. He was the uh, creator of the BB-15 in Season 1 which came in second place in the tournament. And this thing seems to have some pretty heavy firepower, decent speed and maneuverability, and judging by its size it's probably pretty durable too. but it is absolutely tearing up the broken sword. Not as fast as the, uh... Oh, which battle was that? Oh, uh, I can't remember. I'm sure you guys know which one I'm talking about, where the, there was just huge volley... F oh, it was the Archer Mark II versus, uh... Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. There's too many ships, too many episodes, too many battles. <laughs> but I remember it was the Archer Mark II super floating super fortress that had the absolute ton of guns and firepower. But the Mirai's firepower is definitely nothing to, to shrug off. This thing can lay down the hurt. Very interesting to see how this does in the tournament further down. But yeah, with the. Oh, there we go. The, the broken sword finally got some shots off and they missed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Complete and utter dominance by the Mirai Shiki in this battle. And there it goes. The broken sword is despawning. So, round one 
goes to the Mirai here. We will get things loaded back in. See how round two goes below, but it's like honestly, it's probably going to go pretty much the same. The uh, the broken sword didn't even get the fight back. Its weapons must have a uh, significant reload times. Uh, there we go. First, I forgot which ship I was loading in there for a second, even though I've been actively talking about it. <laughs> Gotta love those brain fart moments. Alright, there we go. Spawned in. Camera ready. Clock reset. And start. I'm gonna spend some time looking at the uh, Mirai here since I was watching the action over there on the Broken Sword the whole time in the first battle. Yeah, just already firing. Got a very good rate of fire. But with Crams, that, also, that has the downside of making each individual shell much less powerful than it would be because the faster you fire, the less you can cram into the shell before it fires. Oh, and the broken sword just getting slammed on. Again, oh, that front gun is gone. It's trying to swing itself around and, oh, there we go. Now we've got that side barrage of shell. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Holy crap! Oh, oh, but the Mirai turned. Dodged that huge volley of fire. That's insane, and that's only one side. <laughs> Jeez! Man, if that thing would turn broadside faster, it would have. It would be quite dangerous to the Mirai, I think. But it took just way too long to actually get his guns in. Oh, there we go. There were some shots. Let's see how these do. Definitely landed, but I don't see any real damage. All that secondary seems to have been taken out. Did it? Uh, I don't. Hmm. I don't see any actual damage. It's 100% still. It seems though sh the, the shells fired by the His Broken Sword are not the strongest. That or the Mirai's armor is just really, really powerful. Which, it could be a combination of both. Just, I, I, it's like I wanted to spend time with the, the Mirai, but it's like the battle is very one-sided. All the shells are going over there, the action's over there. I do want to give the Mirai its screen time. Because it is, it is... I like this ship. I am a big fan of this ship. Both from a mechanical standpoint and an aesthetic stand standpoint. I wish I could build ships like this. The spotter plane thing is just... That's a cool idea. That's fun. Even made it look like a plane, even though propellers and such aren't allowed. Like, that's some, uh... That's some ingenuity there. Let's get a damage report. Oh, the broken sword's down to 60%. It'll soon be too damaged and despawn. Oh, excuse me. There it is, there's the 55%, 54%. It will soon despawn, so we're just waiting for that official decision. And then I'll go on and do a, uh, a second match here. This was quick and short and sweet. Even if it was extremely one-sided. The Mirai almost looks like a bully with how badly it's beating up on the Broken Sword. And there we go, there's the despawning. So yeah, I'll go ahead and get this reset cut here as usual, get a, the next battle set up, and I'll see you guys in a minute. And we're back. So for the second battle, we've got the Battleship Cram Duo by Bokeh 1010, which we saw way back in, uh, I believe it was the very first episode. Uh, it is. This is its second match. 
is going up against the Gargantua by Aerodane, which lives up to its name. That is a pretty big ship. I mean, if you just look at the comparison between the Grand Duo and the Gargantua there, very big size difference. Uh, the Gargantua also has these smaller little destroyers on it, all entirely made of wood, it looks like. It's got some, uh, you know, the guns on it and whatnot, but it'll get its overview by Evil Frizzorgan, the thread for that is linked in the description as always. We'll go ahead and get the battle underway. And once again, Evil Frizzurgan, thank you for doing that. Saving me a lot of time, effort, stress, and worry with that. Anyway, the, the Gargantua immediately firing a volley of high explosive shells. The Cram Duo seems to be evading it, as uh, tends to happen for the initial volleys as the ships turn and maneuver and start their attack runs, they, uh, they, end, they end up doing serpentines like that, just like the Cram Duo is doing right now, and that makes it very hard to hit. Even larger ships become hard to hit when they move like that. And Oh, but, oh, went over it, sailed over the, the Cram Duo. I thought that was going to land. Oh, uh, the Cram Duo is under a lot of fire, but, oh, there's the first hit. Oh, and it lost its rear gun there. Let's see how the uh, Gar Gargantua was doing so far. It doesn't seem to have taken much in the way of damage yet either. Oh, I'm not sure where it's aiming those shells. I guess maybe the Gargantua was shifting in the changed direction or something. I'm not sure. That that front cram duo has taken a, a little bit of damage, but it's still got most of its guns, and it's. Ooh, laying into the Gargantua from point-blank range now. Oh, but this one back here looks like it may be in trouble. Oh, the game's calculating whether there's going to be collision or not. Uh, thankfully, we avoided that. This one took some big hits back here, though. Ooh. It's still got some guns going, but there are definitely a lot of blocks missing. Down to 83%. The other one's 91%. Yeah, this one back here is... It's officially sinking. Oh, that's not good. If it's below 80%, I won't even need to do anything. It's not, though. It's at 83. So I gotta keep an eye on that. See if it comes back up. The other battleship cram do is running in amongst the, uh, the fleet there. Oh, but the... Uh... Oh, it came back up. So that's good. That is definitely good. It used about 20 seconds of its disqualification clock there. Just, but uh, that's also going to expose it to fire again. And the Gargantua is just huge, and its weapons are spaced out rather nicely, so they don't necessarily loot. It's, it, they're actually kind of hard to kill. Oh, and as soon as I say that, a pen death fuse gets into this main turret, blows it clean off. Oh, jeez. But these, these cram duos, they're so tiny next to the Gargantua. Oh, man. Oh, is the Gargantua AI dead? Looks like the Gargantua is AI dead. Oh, man, that might cause some serious uh, FPS drops when that starts despawning. Or starts despawning. Yeah, let's see. Time's kind of slow into a crawl as the Gargantua despawns. That large ship had so much, so many blocks in it still, but its AI apparently got hit. Uh, we're still moving along at a decent rate. A little bit of a slowdown from degraded mode, but uh... oh jeez, <laughs> looks like one of the uh, the little dist oh no, the crab duos are gonna run to each other. Don't do it. <laughs> Uh, yep, there they go. Ran into each other. That's a bit unfortunate. And they're focusing in on uh, this 
ship over here. They, they're ignoring this one, even though it's really close. But, oh, because it's AI dead and despawning too. <laughs> okay, then. It looks like the Cram Duo was in a bit of, a bit of trouble early on there. But uh, they weathered the storm long enough to snipe out those AIs. I wonder if they use aim point selection. Or if it's just because these things are made purely of wood that it's just really easy. Oh no, there's some metal in that. Very little though. They're almost almost entirely wood. That it's just they're able to hit. It looks like they're aiming at the AI. At least the uh, the pen depth fuse shells are. Yeah, that's two shells in a row that landed in this area here. Oh, jeez. One of the cram duos is going vertical. And this one doesn't have any weapons left. That one stopped. It's like, ooh, this is a... Uh this is interesting. It's not over yet. But I think the... I've got a... Uh, bloop on my phone there. But I, th I think the Gargantua losing its main ship and one of its uh, secondary ships is probably going to cause it to lose by hit points if we go the distance here. Oh, I think that... Well, it took out the engines, at least. It may have taken out the, uh... Because it still has an AI. Oh, it took out everything except the core. Oh, well, there it goes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. This, uh, it's called a gargoyle, I believe. Oh, I, I can't look at it now is defeated and despawning, and that is it. The Gargantua by Aerodane has been defeated by the Battleship Cram Duo by Boki 1010, but that was that was a pretty close match. That was that was pretty close. So it looked like the Cram Duo was in a bit of trouble there for a minute, with one of them sinking and the, uh, one of them getting pounded on by the Gargantua's guns. But uh, they managed to hold together long enough to get those AIs out. I think if those things had better armor on their AIs, uh, the Battleship Cram Duo wouldn't have done as well. But it's it's pretty obvious they have aim point selection after sniping out the AI on all three vessels. <laughs> anyway, get the camera set, the clock reset, and round two, start. see how this one goes. I'm gonna spend some time over here with the, uh, the are they gargoyles? Yeah, gargantua and gargoyles. I mean, it, it definitely lives up to its name. It's huge. And its weapons are kind of hard to destroy when they're so spaced out like that. But, uh, even small minor shells are able to do some serious damage. Not that the shells on the Cram Duo are small and minor, just just saying. Wood is not the most durable material in from the depths. Not even close. So it is like super magically buoyant. <laughs> so this Cram Duo is not doing so hot. It has taken some hits. Its weapons are staying together. But uh Oh, it looks like the, the Gargantua fleet has shifted targets, though, which it probably shouldn't have done. Oh, but that's a lot of guns off of that cram duo there. It just got hammered. How's this guy doing? Oh, it looks like it's taking some more fire. But it's it's still together. It has been reselected thanks to it still having functioning weapons, I think. At this range, it, it, it's kind of hard for the Gargantua to miss. But it's also at the danger of having its AI sniped out. Ooh, and that turret just got wrecked. Or wait, was there a turret there? Or? No, that's not a turret, it's just a little bulge thing. I don't 
know why I called that a turret. Oh yeah, that's the AI compartment, isn't it? I bet you, because that's where the armor was on the gargoyle. The only metal. I can't tell. It'd be too hard to get in there while it's... Oh, that gun just took a direct hit. How's... Cram is still getting wailed on over here, though. How's the other one doing? Oh, I'm having some FPS issues because of the collision. Okay, that one's there. This one seems to be doing just fine. Other than the fact that it's missing most of its guns. Oh, the Gargantua's main gun seems to be, uh... Stuck. Damaged badly. Oh, big explosion there. Oh, was that a pen depth fuse getting that deep into the Gargantua? Ooh. Oh, nope. The Gargantua's still there. 75%. 81%. 93% on the cram duos. This cram duo seems to have gone dead in the water and is getting just peppered by the, uh, the gargoyle's gun there. Ooh, and another shell came in. Oh, and... Ooh, that turret just got popped. That was a good shot. And that was the only one on that on that vessel that was actually firing still. Another quick check. 74%. Gargoyle, 85. Gargoyle, 90. Gargantua, 76. So this is a, an even closer battle than the last one. The, the cram duos haven't managed to successfully snipe out the weapon the uh, AI. This go around. Maybe they don't have aim point selection. Maybe it was just luck. I'm not sure. But the secondary guns on the Gargantua are opening up, firing, hitting, and they, they look like they're kind of small, though. They didn't do a whole lot of damage. But that! Those shots! Uh, they weren't aimed in the best position there, but they, they definitely uh, can do some more, more damage. The secondaries can land on top of the ship and hit the guns. They'll do some serious damage, like like that. Yeah, just like that. Let's see, did we lose a cram duo? Yeah, it looks like one of the cram duo has despawned. Uh oh, this might be going to around three. Because the Cram Duo is definitely a 50-50. They're identical vessels. So that puts... that Basically, the, the cram, this Cram Duo now has to defeat... Oh, well, no, they don't have to because it's a multi-ship entry. Never mind. They, oh, <laughs> it just lost all of its guns. Well, not all of them. It has this one barrel-damaged gun in the front here. But, oh, uh, get more dings on my phone. Got an email or somebody left a comment or something. Oh, is that shell gonna hit me? Yep, that landed. This uh, cram duo getting focused by the entire fleet. It's slowly losing health. Well, not so slowly. But I haven't seen the... Has this guy actually fired enough? There it goes. Okay. I was wondering. Yep, that punched through and uh, detonated on the side here. But uh, things are not looking good for the Cram Duo right now. This is looking like it's going to be a round three. So yeah, I will like uh, unlikely. Yeah, uh, I will not. W come on, come on, tongue lips, work with me here. It is unlikely that I will be doing a third battle on this episode because of uh, this one going to three rounds. So this will probably be the final the final episode. Assuming that the Cram Duo doesn't somehow pull the win out here, but that's extremely unlikely. We've, I mean, it's still 3 minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock, so... It's possible, but... Oh, well, not if it goes under the water like that. It is now sinking. And it's below 80%, so it might get the below 80% and sinking. Yep. And there it goes. Despawning. 
So round two goes to the Gargantua by Aerodane. We'll get round three started and uh, see who comes out on top, who goes on to round three of the tournament. Because this is this is the uh, the second. Both of these matches, like the first match in this episode was the first round two match. And this is the second round two match. I don't know why it uh, ordered them the way it did on the bracket. Like I may show you that real quick after the episode. Yeah, after this episode, since there will be a little bit of time left, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go into the brackets and show what the status of everything is there. Okay, get the Battleship Cram Duo spawned in. There are only 161,000 materials, I see. They're, do they're doing pretty well for being that far under the limit. Clock reset. Round three, start. So I think it basically comes down to how these secondaries land their shots. If they manage to to land on the battleship cram duo like they did before and knock out some guns early. Like, knocking out guns in the first couple of volleys makes a huge difference in the outcome of the battle. Because that that's, makes a ton less shells get fired out. Just losing one gun could re easily remove several dozen shells from a match. If you do knock it out early, early on. Oh, nope. They, the, this is going much more like round one where the cram duo was able to evade a lot of the fire. Oh. Well, it didn't get any guns, but it's getting close. This may, uh, and it's sailing in a straight line now instead of, oh, and there go the front guns. They just got slammed. Oh, and the cram duo very low in the water. Not quite sinking yet, but very, very close. And it seems the Gargantua fleet has changed targets to the rear cram duo. And, oh, immediately takes out its front guns, too. Oh, no, that's very bad for the cram duo. That is very, very bad news. Now that they've been evened out in weaponry, they're all fo- Oh, looks like that's some friendly fire there. <laughs> oh, guys. Ooh, the big gun on the Gargantua just took a hit. Looks like it may, uh, yeah, it's been disabled. The front one's still active, though. Now you've got this cram duo moving in. They've still got guns, and their guns are still effective, but they have taken a significant amount of damage. Oh, having some FPS hook, uh, hitches there. There's a lot of blocks in this battle with the Gargantuas just being a huge ship. <laughs> now the cram duo is getting run over by the Gargantua. That is not where you want to be. Actually, you know what? I take that back. This may be exactly where the, the uh, cram duo wants to be. If it can get shots off into the, the side and underbelly of the Gargantua there, while it's basically in a spot where it's immune from, to its guns, that could be good for it. Then again, it could also make it slow and a slow and easy target for the smaller vessels, which is not good. The uh, Gargantua had its uh, had one of its big guns pop there. Like, oh, and it's going to go from running into the Gargantua to running into a gargoyle. Plunk. <laughs> okay, I'm not entirely sure why it broke blocks all the way down here the way it did, but, you know, whatever. Let's go check and see how the other cram duo is doing. It's really low in the water. Still, still floating, not sinking, but uh, it's rather low. Gargantua is down to 73%. Both cram duos, 70 and 72%. One of the gargoyles is still full health. 
the other one looks like the only damage it's taken is the the ramming damage it took from the, the cram duo here. One advantage of having a multi-ship entry though is definitely if this situation happens, like this this gargoyle cannot shoot at this cram duo very easily right now. And in a one-on-one -on -one situation, that could be uh, very detrimental if they're able to fire you on you, in the, but you're not. And with multi-ship entries, yeah, this one may not be able to fire on it, but the Gargantua and the other Gargoyle can. And they are. This Cram Duo seems to only have, like, it has these two guns. Oh, well, it had two guns. Now it has one. That gun doesn't seem to be able to aim where it wants to. Oh, was that... That was friendly fire. <laughs> and there's the downside of multi-ship entries. <laughs> oh, is that going to be more friendly fire? Yep. It's this, uh... Gargoyle gets rolled over by the Cram Duo. This Cram Duo seems to be almost dead in the water. It's moving very slowly. It is repairing up, but it has lost all of its guns. This one is uh, going vertical as it capsizes the gargoyle. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and give a short pause to the timer here. Just because we've been having FPS issues for a while, and that's kind of dilating things. And more friendly fire. <laughs> yeah, I'll basically extend the time out a little bit since things aren't moving at uh, full speed. We've been in degraded mode for a while because of the collisions. But at least it isn't causing the game to completely lock up and make me fear that there's going to be a crash. Anyway, I'll go ahead and start restart the clock now. That's enough uh, making up for the lost time due to frame drops. But yeah, the, the collision algorithms or codes or whatever you want to call them, whatever decides how collision damage is done, needs a, a serious optimization update something. Something somehow, because my rig can handle a lot of things, and it should not be having this much trouble just because two ships are grinding into one another. <laughs> yeah, we're down to 3 minutes 30 seconds left on the clock. Oh no, now we're getting some really bad frame rate hitching. This is the, it's not quite as bad as it gets when it uh, crashes normally, but uh, it's not good. I'm just amused that, oh, this gargoyle has been AI deaded. Despawning, and there's another Badoop on my phone. Cram Duo in a very awkward situation unless they make one of these despawn. Which they have forced to happen. I, I'm not sure if I have numbers for the Gargantua or not. But uh, I'll have to double check that if need be. But um... Even if I don't, the maximum that one of those, the one of the gargoyles will take up is 
opening it at 67%, while the battleship cram uh, Cramdu will be at 50% due to the despawn. And, yeah, th it, it's... By hit points, the, uh, the battleship cram duo is definitely losing at this point. It may even end up getting despawned before the battle end, before the time runs out. Yes, yeah, oh, yep, there it goes. That's it. So it doesn't even matter what the hit points are because they are going to despawn. Yep, there it is. Congratulations, Eridane. Your gargantua fleet has managed to defeat the Battleship Cram Duo. And we'll be moving on to round three of the Battleship Brawl Tournament. Uh, condolences, Bokeh 1010. Your, your Battleship Cram Duo was not quite able to deal with the, uh, the size and strength and just... I don't know. They just weren't able to deal with the uh, the gargantua. Like they they kept switching targets. The kept the gar the left the gargantua alive after it lost a lot of guns, but it still had some, and they were able to keep putting damage out. So ended up defeating your ship, unfortunately. So yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a look at the bracket. Okay. Now this isn't uh, fully updated for all of the battles that have. Uh, occurred before this point because uh, I'm recording this on the day that the Amagi and Hanaki fight came out. So these fights, like as I'm recording this, the, the Pravda Fleet, Alice Protected Cruisers, Cramper My Weenus, and Davros class haven't actually fought yet. So, oh, well, there's the timer. You can see the date here. But, yeah, so... I'm not gonna spoilers you, but yeah, up until this point, this is where we're looking at. So, or well, I can't. It's not that I would be giving you spoilers because by the time you see this, those matches will have happened. So I actually could just tell you. But I just can't enter them into the tournament because they haven't happened. Time, time craziness. Okay, so you actually saw. You've seen. By the time you see this video, you've seen that the Alice Protected Cruisers defeated the Pravda Fleet and the Davros class defeated the Cramp and Mywenus. I just can't actually enter those values into the tournament because at the time of this recording, they haven't happened yet. So, yeah, it's not really spoilers for you now, but it would be if I entered them now. Ah, uh, jeez, just forget it. So, the Alice Protected Cruisers will be going up against the Steel Kaiser and the, the Davros class will be going up to the Regent VHAP by VHAP by Bricks, and the uh, Gargantua is going here to round three, and it'll be facing the Mirai, sh the Mirai uh, by the Light LOD in round three here. Uh, these battles obviously haven't happened yet, and we've got the secondary bracket forming up. It's going to be a while before people in the secondary bracket get seen again. The first secondary battle, secondary bracket battle, is battle number 33. And we are on battle, uh, we just finished uh, 17. So we're halfway to where the first secondary bracket battle happens again. And it's just the order they came in. I'm not sure why it ordered them like this. I guess because of the seeding. I don't know. It's strange, but whatever. They happened in the same episode, so it really doesn't make a difference. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the battlefield.